So, uh, which are the teams that are you looking for in the playoffs of the EuroLeague? In playoffs? Yes. In playoffs, I would like to see Bayern Munich do well because of uh, Trinkieri, I think he's a good coach and uh, I like Lucic, I like, uh, um, what's the name of the point guard? He was in uh, Baldwin. Baldwin. Baldwin, yes. yes. Uh, he was playing in Portland too and I think he's doing uh, very good in, uh, in Europe, which is weird to see that they get uh, adapted to our style of uh, game so quick and he's doing very well and I, I mean, they're down 2-0, they, they, they should be up. I mean, that one, that one is pretty even, even though Olympia is uh, up to zero. Fenerbahce is, I mean, playing with uh, what they have, it's hard. Uh, CSKA is also very, very dominant. FS is on another level this year. Um, they play together since many years ago. They know each other. They don't care who scores the most, who rebounds, who passes. They just want to win. And you, you can see that even when we play them, they don't really, they just, play the game the right way and uh, the, re the results are, are coming. And, uh, and Bar Barcelona Zenit, I mean, it's, it's a, bit, a little bit weird to... I mean, I was there, you know, and uh, we are always favorites and we you play Zenit. Uh, I mean, when I was there, it was the top 16 format. So we were playing Galatasaray and all that, but, uh, you know, with fans, it's hard to... You know, you can't disrespect anyone. You have to be ready as uh, if it's final. So it's a and little also bit. Also, Pasqual knows. Yes, but, but yes, but uh, of course, of course, and he just renewed the the contract. He knows everything. I mean, he's a Catalonian uh, as he gets, so that's his home team. And it's a little bit weird to see them like uh, lose the first one and uh, be very close to even lose the second one. But it's going to be hard for them because they go to Russia right now and there is fans out there. And so yes. I don't it's know. A little bit I mean, it's weird. Yeah, it's weird. They they have the best team in Europe, but uh, it's like they're they're missing. They're missing something. They're not. Uh, you know, they were dominant during the season, but like now where they have to be dominant, it's a little bit weird game. But I I, I hope it's only like uh, you know, uh, like initial like stress or whatever it is, and yes. then they will get uh, loose right now. You have completed two months uh, in Greece, and uh, one would say that from day one you felt uh, very easy and uh, very comfortable. Uh, it was the reception uh, of the fans in the airport that make you feel so uh, happy and so cheerful, you know, about the movement in Greece and in Panathinaikos. If I wasn't so close to my friends in K13 and uh, the Panathinaikos and everybody that plays here, uh, there wouldn't be no reception, there wouldn't be no like family type of environment because I would be the new guy here, you know, but I'm very, very close to K13, to Panathinaikos all these years and even in NBA, so it's, uh, I think it's uh, like a natural feeling. Uh, it's like a home uh, to me uh, here. The truth is that uh, all this bonding has made a great uh, impression on Greek fans because you have never been a member of the team in the past years uh, and uh, you have no memories in the green jersey. Uh, one would say that uh, you would expect uh, to feel the same way with Barcelona because you played there and you've been there. There is a difference. There is a big difference because uh, when I was there, you know, I was there, you know, young star, you know, that is uh, going to be the, you know, the, the next thing and for Croatia and for uh, for Spanish basketball and everything. But uh, it was uh, it was weird a little bit, you know, because we were competing for every trophies. But then, you know, I was up and down. Uh, am I going to, you know, you stay? Were am I gonna, and, yes. And then when I was going to leave to NBA, then was like, OK, this is your team. If you stay, I mean. You can't really talk to me, you know, like this, you know, you have to be <laughs> serious, you can't like, oh, now I will give you everything. So, you know, and of course, uh, every, the person that I really want to t say thank you is uh, Nacho, uh, the past GM of uh, Barcelona, because he made it also possible for me to come here, because I said, you know, after the bubble, I was done. I wasn't going to play basketball at all. I was uh, happy with uh, playing with my friends, uh, pick up training. Why? Because I was, I was just fed up with everything, how everything went. I wasn't really, I was, I was retired, like for real. Like I, I told to my manager, I'm retiring. I'm, I'm really done with this. And <laughs> nobody took me serious other than myself, you know. But I was very, very serious. First time I hear this. Yeah, uh, because I didn't say it to anybody. Okay. <laughs> and, but I was really done. Uh, and then um, I guess we uh, got in contact, but they were contacting my agency. And in my agency that was representing me at the time, I only have one manager right now. They were saying that I'm only interested in NBA, which is totally <laughs> false. So I was uh, just, you know, staying to myself, practicing, playing uh, five or five with my friends uh, in Florida, and then uh, 
the contact uh, was made finally through my real uh, manager and uh, we started to talk and he told me, asked me, what is the, you know, how do you feel about Panetimes? I said, <laughs> like, uh, like, what do you think? What do you mean how I feel? I, for sure. And then uh, the obstacle was, of course, Barcelona because they have my rights. So um, Nacho made it uh, possible for me and, uh, you know, they, were, they had problems at the time. They didn't have president and all the other stuff from soccer, whatever. And he made it. He made it possible for me to to come here, and I said for sure, like for you know, for Panathinaikos, everything. How did Panathinaikos look to you as an organization when you were younger, and let's say you were a fan of the team, and how it is right now? And also, I want to ask you about Diamantidis, uh, with whom you played as an opponent in Barcelona back in 2015. Uh, how you look at him uh, right now outside of the pits and how you looked at him uh, back then? Well, first for Dimitris, uh, I'm super, super happy that he stayed, you know, because uh, I think that type of uh, mind should be around basketball, you know, because that's one of the kind, one of a kind of basketball player and he helped us Tremendously, you know, so I'm happy that he continued to stay around the team uh, as a GM and that he's observing everything from the another uh, angle, but, you know, uh, and then he con controls it, you know, he can really have an influence on all of us that are trying to become uh, like him. And then as a, as a team, the team was up and down, which is normal. Uh, a lot of the great players uh, left, uh, Coach Obradovic left, uh, so, you know, we have to find uh, our own... Uh, DNA right now, identity, and uh, you know, build it. Uh, basically, build it from the from the bottom again. It's not that we are on the bottom, but like we have to. Every every great team has that uh, shedding, yes. you know. And you have to get rid of some players. You have to sign some new players and create it uh, again. And that's the fun part about it. It was difficult for you to adapt, you know, to a team that when you came was out of the goals, you know, in Euroleague, and you know didn't have so much no. competition in the Greek league. No, 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 no. I think uh, like the competition in Greek league is very, very good. I was even su surprised, and I like the what other teams are, are doing, how they play. Uh, I don't know, Prometea, Saik, uh, who we played, uh, Pauk, all these other teams. Lavrio, uh, Lavrio. It's even a biggest surprise, and I'm glad that they are doing good uh, because it's a challenge for us. It's uh, all about their competition, right? Um, but. Yeah, I mean, uh, when I was uh, coming, I wasn't really, um, for me, it was like the dream to like just to be here. You know, I wasn't even thinking like, oh, well, what position are we or whatever. I'm just going to come in and take advantage of everything and uh, just give them my best help. You know, so I wasn't even thinking about anything else. Uh, you have said in various interviews that for you it will be the easiest decision to stay at Panathinaikos next year. Uh, do you see similar mood from the team? Uh, have you discussed anything, you know, or do you think it's too early for such a decision? Early? No, I mean, it's very hard, you know, you, you also have to understand the, the Nikos and uh, Frankie and uh, Dimitris, they're all like, uh, this is their first year together, so it's, you have to put, uh, you know, show respect to them, you know, because they will be the ones uh, deciding. Also, Coach Kataj just came in, so like what he wants, what kind of player he wants. And then also there's uh, my teammates, you know, so it's kind of, you know, what am I going to tell them? Hey, I'm, I'm coming back. Hey, I'm not coming back. Like, it just doesn't make sense. We have to finish the, the season, uh, fight for uh, and win the both trophies. And then in the summer we see, of course, uh, there's going to be Rumors about, uh, I don't know, other EuroLeague teams, the NBA teams are already like uh, starting to like create something for uh, the next season is how it goes. The teams that are like not in playoffs, they start to recruit right away. And that's always how it goes. But, uh, you know, for me, like Panathinaikos is a, is a dream for me. You know, I'm really happy here and uh, I would love to, to come back. But we have to be professional. We have to sit down and talk and listen to everybody. It's, it's how it goes. I already spoke about it, but we'll see. Do you think that the evolution of Europeans in the NBA has to do with many unbalanced factors? Uh, that means uh, concerning, you know, the team that will select uh, the player and the mood that the team will have to develop uh, its player, like the case of Yanis, of Luca, of Tony Parker earlier. Uh, because, uh, you know, in your situation, in your case, uh, uh, when you were the greatest talent of your time, uh, when you went to the NBA, uh, the development was not the appropriate one. For Luca is the right way. For Yanis is the best way. Because uh, the way you are taking the kid from Europe, 
that is uh, already playing with uh, pros. Uh, in, in Yanni's case, he was raw. He was in a second league here, so you don't know what to expect, but you can see the outside of the box that he can become really, really, really good, that he is today. And that his story is so imp uh, fascinating for me because it's the right way. How do you treat us from Europe? The Lucas way is like he's the like, best. MVP, yeah. Like not only that, but he's at that age and at that skill that he played with against the pros. It's already better than any skill in, in America. So this is the only right way to treat him like this. Here you take everything and we will build around you. But for me, it was like I came, I came, <laughs> I came to Orlando, and I was like, after first uh, practice, I go to my man, what is this dude? Like I come here as a as a fifth pick, but uh, we all getting three that here, like we are second round or something. I don't even know. Like I came to graveyard. There is so many of us, and nobody, everybody thinks it's uh, his own team. So, you know, it's a very unfortunate um, what happened. But you know, like I never let it uh, affect me because I've seen so so many bad examples uh, from players, from front offices and all that, that uh, I just boosted myself. I was, okay, if you guys decide that, I will go by myself, I will practice by myself, I will add extra work and extra training and extra focus, extra video and everything. And that I survived by myself there, not because they cared about me or anything. You would like to share some of the funny reactions you received, you know, from the NBA players due to the reception at the airport? No, I don't, I don't speak to them. Like, ah. I don't, I'm, uh, I mean, uh, Dame said, uh, like, good luck when I, was, uh, when I was leaving and everything, because I really bonded with him. And I really, I picked uh, Portland because of him, because I wanted to, for my future, I wanted to pick his brain, how he thinks and how he plays and everything, because I will, at one point, and one time in my future, I will be in a position of, of him. So I will have to like act like how he is acting right now in terms of leadership, in terms of uh, how he supports everyone, everything. And he was really, really like a, a great experience for me. So he's uh, one of the, that I really like from, from the bottom of my heart, I really respect that he, you know, came to me and said, hey, good luck. Like, just take your time and everything. So, but from everybody else is, uh, this is not, uh, it's not uh, like Europe here, you know, like we, for example, I come here and uh, there is Bojo, Dino, Pop and uh, Nick Dip. They're always together. They're always together. Whatever we do, they're always together. In the NBA, you practice by yourself. Like you finish your practice, you go home to your own house. Nobody cares like what, who you are, what you do. And... Last question, but not least. And I'm, uh, I'm going to make this question because, you know, many friends of mine uh, uh, want me to ask this kind of question. Uh, what is your favorite female TV persona? <laughs> I think you know. <laughs> <laughs> <But> <laughs>